Carolina at New Orleans. This feels like it could be an absolutely disgusting lineup. We know that Carolina can't move the ball on offense. And then the Saints, are we going to see Jameis again? Or do we think Derek Carr is going to make a remarkable recovery? It sounds like that, you know, I mean, this is Derek Carr's second concussion in the space of a month. And it wasn't just concussion. It was one of those injuries where it was like, literally just reeled off a litany of issues. Like I think it was an ankle as well as shoulder. It was a bad, it was a bad hit. Yeah. It was a bad hit. And perhaps there's a point where the Saints actually just need to protect Derek Carr for himself. There's nobody's doubting how tough he is to be at a play after the issue he had earlier on in the season. But at a certain point, you're probably not helping your teammates. But Jameis Winston, I mean... James is a fun guy, and the league is more fun when he's playing quarterback. But he hasn't played a full game since week three of 2022. He started that season for the Saints, and it wasn't exactly the most... It wasn't like when he was in Tampa Bay. He scored 21 points, 6.6, and then 12.6 points, which isn't the kind of fantasy gold mine that we knew when he was throwing 30 touchdowns and 30 interceptions. I think it I'm definitely intrigued by it. Like, if he plays, I'll want to play at least one James Winston, Chris Olave stack. And I think it doesn't really downgrade Chris Olave too much. He's had three straight games over 90 yards. It'd be nice to see Chris Olave break a long touchdown. All three of his touchdowns have come in the red zone. It feels like that's the one bit which we've not really seen from him lately. Um, but this game kind of comes back to. How many touchdowns does Alvin Kamara score? All season long, we've talked about how the Panthers allow more rushing touchdowns to running backs than any other team. It's 1.4 per game. No other team allows more than 1.1. And Kamara is just balling. Like, we haven't, he's had back to back games of over 100 total yards. He hasn't been below 70 total yards in any game this year. Really consistent. We fought with Jamal Williams coming in, we fought with Kendry Miller coming in, but it might eat into his workload, but it just hasn't. Um, so, yeah, and then on the other side, I'm kind of intrigued how well Tuba Hubbard does. There was a lot of talk this week about how the Panthers changed up the running scheme and it benefited Tuba Hubbard a lot. I mean, he had 104 yards, two touchdowns, he scored over 20 points in two consecutive weeks, and he really is the only interesting part of this Panthers offense now. Adam Phelan, all of his stats have regressed since the week seven by less yards after catch, lower QBR when targeted, 5.1 catches to 8.3 pre-bye week. Um, and then, yeah, I mean, John Mingo has been interesting over the last four with 7.25 targets per game, 35% air yards, but it hasn't really clicked or kind of come together enough for fantasy purposes. And against this defense, I don't want any part of it. Yeah, it feels like they've sort of anointed Mingo as the guy that's going to play most of the snaps, almost trying to force, right, we need to see what we've got in this guy going into the offseason. And they are forcing the ball to him. Sadly, he can't get open. He's His foot speed is far too slow to reel in a lot of the catches that he's been sent his way. So, yeah, not, not looked great so far. I have to say, you bigged up Alvin Kamara, but I think you undersold it. He's played nine weeks so far this year. Every single week he's finished in the top 24. Seven of those weeks he's finished in the top 12. That is remarkable. He is just plug and play top 12. He's the running back four on the season, having played in only nine games. Like, that is absolutely wild. Yeah, and he's somebody that we both kind of, in the offseason, Bell had the card stacked against him. We were wrong on him. But, you know, the good for advantage of fantasy football is you have time to correct those mistakes, and particularly with Taysom Hill being banged up. If Taysom Hill misses this game, I think we could see a 40-point game from Alvin Kamara. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd like to point out, Tom, that I persuaded you should draft him in at least one draft. So, uh, <laughs> so yeah, we, we got we got some shares at least. Uh, Tarek, another one of our members in the chat, saying Tuba Lub likely to replace, repeat last week, having to choose two of him, Javonte Williams, Jerome Ford and Jalen Warren. Yeah, I think I'd go Tuba and, I mean, my lean's Jalen Warren there, but Tarek, I know you like Ford and I can understand that one as well. Yeah, I'm just having a quick look. So I've got no. Go... Javante 
isn't in play for me. Yeah, I've got Ford, Hubbard, Javante pretty much in the same tier. So, yeah, I'd kind of toss I'd toss it up. I, the one I wouldn't go is Jalen Warren, but that's me presuming that Najee Harris is back this week. So, yeah, if, if Najee Harris doesn't go tonight, then, yeah, Warren's an absolute must start there. And then Alex is back with another question saying, would you start feeling over Rashi Rice or Josh Downs and Scott Fishbowl? No, that's Rashi Rice for me easily. And then I'd probably go Josh Downs ahead of Phelan. I just don't think the matchup is favourable to him at all. The Saints, um, they rank well against wide receiver ones. We've got the fifth best rating in DVOA against wide receiver ones. And Adam Phelan, I mean, it's just it's just not there. Yeah, I, it, this is Rashi Rice for me. He's, he's a top 20 receiver for me this week. There, there is, you know, he is probable. He's, he's not fully practicing yet, so keep an eye on that. But yeah, I, I don't think you, it sounds awful because Thielen's probably got you into the playoffs in Scott Fishbowl. But I don't know if you can ride with him this week after the way he's been producing over the last few weeks. Mm-hmm.